My entitled sister wants to steal our deceased grandmother's apartment out from under me, so the guy she's cheating on her husband with can move in instead, and she can see him easier. Just needed a place to complain because I'm upset, so it's cool if nobody sees this or replies. Sorry if you do read this and things make no sense. No promises to be coherent. Anyway, hold on to your hats and get ready for a train wreck, fellas. My sister, mid-30s, is probably the worst case of entitled I've ever seen. She's always the victim, can do no wrong, and the world owes her for her imaginary suffering. This time, however, she's reached a new level. She's recently confessed to our mom and I that she's dating someone behind her husband's back. And to be honest, her husband is also a ginormous dirtbag, but just leave the guy, okay? I don't think anyone deserves to be cheated on, and even though he totally sucks, an affair doesn't constitute as some kind of punishment. It's messy, gross, and not worth it. Save everyone the heartache, okay? Now, our grandma passed at the end of August. It hasn't even been a month since she passed. And since she was terminally ill, we did have time to discuss some things and make arrangements for others. She lived in an apartment that's attached to our mom's house, and we had talked about me moving into it after grandma passed, and everyone thought it was a good idea because my grandma had things like no-slip railings, kitchen tools or gadgets for arthritic hands, and I am also disabled and could benefit from the same equipment. Come to find out, my idiot sister thinks it'd be a cool idea to have her marital affair move into our mom's property instead, so she can use our mom as some kind of cover for her affair. And I am absolutely repulsed and livid. We were all just starting to let my sister come around again because after grandma passed, she seemed like it really affected her. She was really turning over a new leaf, but it's all because she just wants her boyfriend to move in. I don't think anyone's going to fly with the idea. I just can't believe that she even thought it would be a viable option and something she could even suggest to us. Why does she just assume that will help her cheat on her husband? I want no part of it. I will not be an accomplice. Also, her justification for suggesting she move in is because I don't seem to be in much of a rush to get up there. Like, yeah. I found our grandma deceased less than a month ago. Sorry I haven't been in a hurry to erase grandma from her home. Sorry I haven't been sorting through all of her belongings and getting them ready to be rehomed or donated. I wish I could keep every trace of her. And the fact that I have to get rid of anything at all hurts. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry I haven't done it yet but maybe try having a little empathy. I've decided that I'm kicking my sister out of my life again. Each time I think she's capable of changing, she shows that she's still the same horrible, selfish person, and I'm done falling for the charade. Have fun with the inevitable divorce proceedings. Good luck explaining all this nonsense to your kids, too. I'm sorry you had to go through all that. It sounds like you're still recovering from the death of your grandmother and that it's probably going to take you some time. Your sister's unbelievably selfish and clearly has no one else's interest in mind other than her own. It must be incredibly hurtful for you, especially when you really think about the reasons your sister is using and how stupid they are. She's putting her affair above her disabled brother. How does she not find that embarrassing? I can understand why you completely cut her off after a situation like this. Maybe you should talk to your sister about how hurt you are by this. Maybe there's some way for you two to get along. My wife cheated on our 10-year anniversary. My wife and I were married 10 years ago yesterday. She had been working on a big project for the last few months. The last four weeks or so, she has been putting in extra time, staying late, going in early, to finish up by a deadline. This is a career maker for her. I work construction. With the rain we have had, we have crazy hours trying to make up the time we missed. So I work 12 hours on the days it's nice, sometimes a little longer. If it's raining, when I get up, I don't go in. Some days we get sent home when it starts. Too dangerous. I usually hit the gym for an hour or two. Thursday, we started at 6 a.m. Mid-morning, it starts to rain hard. We go home, and I go to the gym as usual. I cut the workout short to head downtown to see my wife, Megan, to give her flowers and make plans for dinner that night if possible. We really haven't seen much of each other this last week. I went to bed about 9 p.m., she wasn't home, called earlier telling me she's working late. Not unusual for the past month. I stopped and got some flowers and went to her building about 12.30. Nicole was at the receptionist desk and I told her I got here later than I wanted and if she could put the flowers on Megan's desk. She said, I don't think they went to lunch yet. Why not drop them off yourself? She buzzed the door to get back to the offices. The place was deserted. I went to her office, and the door was closed. I always walk in unless the receptionist tells me she's in a meeting, so I walk in, and some guy is standing behind her nuzzling her neck. She is reaching back over his head. She is giggling and saying, We gotta get this done. I am gut punched. I slammed the flowers down, said happy anniversary, and walked out. I didn't hear what she said, just went past Nicole, said goodbye, and left. Made it to the elevators and out the building, then my phone started ringing. I bawled my eyes out all the way home, went into the garage, pulled my camping gear out of the rafters, and took off. I drove about two hours to a state park. I had no idea what to do, I just had to run. I hiked a trail we had been on in the past, about a three hour hike. 
I don't drink much, so I had no booze. I just sat there thinking. Looking back, I am glad I was in a rush. Normally I bring a 45 caliber with me camping. We have black bears, which generally scare off, but get aggressive if hungry or cubs are around. The way I was feeling, I might have ate the barrel that night. My phone was blowing up for Megan, so I had turned it off. I left the park to get reception, turned it on to see my good friend called. I called him right back. He said Megan called him to check on me, make sure I didn't do anything stupid. We talked a bit, told him I gotta think this through, and would catch up on Friday. So while I am thinking about this, I go over our marriage from the beginning to see what I missed. We come from completely opposite backgrounds. My grandfather raised me with my mom, he taught me about life. He had a little saying about everything. He told me marriage would be the hardest job I ever had. You had to work on it every day. God, I miss him. We did not have much. Heard mom and grandpa having many discussions about bills. They worked hard and my brother and I did not miss out on anything we knew of. Megan was born into money. Not overly rich, but very comfortable. Went to a great college, always great clothes, new car, etc. And she is beautiful. 11 out of 10 beautiful. I would joke with her if she coughed about the silver spoon getting stuck in her throat. We met, hit it off, and started dating. I was dumbfounded how such a woman would ever be with me. We dated quite a while before she told me about her parents and lifestyle. Our friends called us the model couple. Because they thought we were so good looking, we had to be models. Families were not as kind, afraid of the differences economically would come into play. Her dad and I started to get along, but her mom took some convincing. She graduates her first job. We plan on getting married. We work out between us that we would expose each other to our lives that we live. I took her whitewater rafting. She took me to the symphony. We went zip lining. We went to an art opening, etc. We agreed we had to experience the other's interests. She was really enthused about the more physical things we did. I kind of liked the symphony and such. I look back and do not see any red flags. Her first two jobs she quit because the men all tried to get in her pants. She was paraded out in front for photos, invited to conferences when other newbies were not, and at a dinner at a conference, a partner tried to get her drunk and tried to force himself into her room that night. She quit, and the next job, the same thing. Quit again. This third job has some women as some of the partners, and none of that nonsense is in our workplace. She seems very happy. We seemed very happy. So now, Friday, I am home, and I called her. Asked her where she was. Back at work. I, being in a smart-ass mood, said that the marriage is taking second place to her job. She responded, since I would not talk, what was she to do? Fair enough. She will be home in an hour. So I wait. I want to save our marriage. If I am lacking in providing, then I want to fix it. I want to ask why, of course, but I cannot accept an I don't know answer. You have the right to be upset. This is your life and your marriage, not just hers. I can't imagine the pain you have felt to walk in on her cheating on you after so long together. It must have all felt so confusing to you in the moment. I'm really glad the receptionist let you in, as if you never found out then and there, who knows how long she would continue to cheat for. You were completely justified in feeling betrayed. I think you need to talk to her about how you feel, and I think she needs to understand what she's doing. This behavior can't continue, especially if you want to save your marriage. My girlfriend of three years cheated on me as payback for me cheating on her during the first nine months of our relationship. That probably sounds a little confusing, so I'll break it down for you guys. I've been with my girlfriend for the last three years. During the first nine months of our relationship, I was young and dumb and slept with two other women that she was friends with regularly. She came to me one day and asked if I was cheating, because she already knew and was just seeing if I would lie, and I told the truth. She was really hurt and mad, and asked a lot of questions that I didn't know how to answer. But after a month of arguing and crying and hurt, we worked it out and got back together. Today, things have been good. We have both been pretty happy, and I have honestly been debating on proposing to her. We have discussed children and whatnot, and I thought things were perfect. I loved this girl. She is so smart and beautiful. I made a huge mistake back then, but she told me she forgave me. However, about a week ago, I walked into my apartment from work and saw her having sex with a friend of mine on our couch. I walked in and she jumped up and just laughed and said, payback is a bitch, huh? Over two years later, he left and she is now trying to kick me out of our apartment. I am not going, both of our names are on that lease. I have told her she is being immature, petty, and the fact that she has held a grudge for this long is fucking bizarre. She just keeps laughing and asking me how it felt, telling me that I deserve all that and more because of the hurt I put her through. How should I handle this? She keeps saying that if she can forgive me for nine months of cheating with her best friends, I can forgive this. But this is really fucking immature and feels almost unforgivable. Playing the long game of revenge is utterly messed up in my opinion. This is just a completely messed up thing to do. This is assault and it's not okay. That guy should have never been in your apartment without your permission, and she had no right to be having sex with him on your couch, let alone in front of you. Really seems like she just held you hostage for years just to hurt you back for the mistake which you made at the start of the relationship. If she couldn't forgive you in the first place, she should have just left there and then.
Am I the jerk for refusing to meet my biological daughter? I gave him my parental rights years ago. Many years ago, I was married to a man named Mark. Two years into the marriage, I found out he was cheating on me and got the other woman pregnant. It was a huge blow because I too was pregnant with his child. I was only nine weeks pregnant and was determined to abort the child and divorce him. He begged me to reconsider, and insisted I give our relationship a second chance, and so I did, albeit reluctantly. I had a very unhappy pregnancy, and when I was six months pregnant, I learned that he never stopped seeing the other woman. He told me that he was torn and that he was in love with both of us. I wasn't willing to tolerate any of that bullshit, so I moved out and filed for divorce. I wanted him to disappear from my life, but being pregnant with his child made things difficult. I never bonded with the baby, and the baby being his offspring contributed to the negative emotions that I felt. I told him I didn't want this baby, so when he got together with the other woman, I gave her the choice to adopt the baby, which she did. With that, I officially signed over my parental rights as soon as the girl turned six months old. I left the day she was born. When I left, I told Mark that I didn't want anything to do with the girl and the other woman was free to be her mother. I moved to another country and tried to leave that part of my life behind. I met a wonderful man and we got married. He knew all about my past and now we have three wonderful kids who are nine, five, and two years old. Recently, my ex Mark contacted me out of the blue and told me that my biological daughter, who is 14 now, wants to meet me. Apparently, his wife had passed away and before she died, she confessed that she wasn't her biological mother. I'm torn. I don't want to meet this kid. It was very difficult for me to leave that part of my life behind. I was depressed for years. I reminded him that I gave him my parental rights years ago, and that I want nothing to do with the both of them. I planned on telling my kids about their half-sibling once they were grown and mentally mature. Not right now, when they are still so little. I told him to never contact me again, and hung up. Am I the jerk? It's hard to imagine that someone could be so torn between two people they love. Sorry you had to go through that. And while it's not really my place to judge, it sounds like your ex-husband was a pretty terrible person. But maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was just a guy who made some bad choices. Who knows? Either way, I can understand why you would feel apprehensive about meeting your daughter. After all, she's basically a stranger to you, right? She's the daughter of the woman who raised her, and not you. You never bonded with her or anything like that. What do you think about having your children meet their half-sister one day when they're older? What do you think about telling them now? I know there are pros and cons either way, but honestly, if I were in your shoes, and if my children were old enough, I would tell them now. Why wait? You don't want them to find out from someone else later on down the road and then be hurt by it all over again. Also, what happens if something were to happen to you before they're old enough to hear this story? Wouldn't it be better for them to hear it from you firsthand than from someone else later on down the road? Am I the asshole for kicking my mom out of my kid's party after she tried to bring my ex's son? I broke up with my ex-girlfriend over five years ago when I caught her cheating on me. We had a seventh-month-old son that I learned wasn't mine. After, demanded a paternity test, and so I was out of his life after that. It hurt going through all that, but what hurt the most was some people in my family being against me leaving my son. Some stopped talking to me. Others I stopped talking to, like my mom, because she still wanted to accept my ex's kid like her first grandchild. So I said fine and cut contact. Last year, I had my first son. We celebrated his one year birthday on the first of this month. When my girlfriend got pregnant, my mom reached out and wanted to make amends for us to be in each other's lives. She said she hasn't had any more contact with the ex. I was mostly thinking for my son and that it would be nice for him to know his grandma, so I gave her a chance. On the actual day of my son's birthday, my brother saw my mom first and goes, oh snap. He saw her getting out of the car with my ex's kid from the window and he told me. My brother told me he had no idea she was gonna bring the kid and said he'll keep her outside if I want. I went outside instead, and my mom had the kid wait in the car while we talked. I was so pissed, I remember yelling at her for trying to bring him to my son's birthday. My mom kept apologizing for hiding it. She just felt really bad because his real dad doesn't want to be involved. And they still have pictures of me and him from when he was a baby, so he still thinks he's my kid. It was hard not to lose any more of my cool, so I just remember saying, get the fuck out and don't ever come back or bring him around again. It was a whole thing, and everyone who was already there saw it play out. My mom left, and my brothers were trying to cheer me up, and get the party back in happy mood for my son. Some family were in a bad mood, and they left early. The shitstorm happened after that, and they're mad for how I treated my mom. Even she said something, too, that she's hurt how much I disrespected her, and she knows it was wrong to lie, but she was really trying to make it easier on ex's son by making him feel part of a family. She really thinks I need to give him a chance because I loved him once. I just hung up on her. Still, everyone's on me calling me an a-hole for callously kicking her out for having good intentions, even if they were misplaced. Am I the jerk here? I'm so sorry you had to go through all that. I'm glad you found love again and got a second chance at happiness. You really showed your mom and ex's kid what a jerk they are for pulling this kind of stunt. I don't blame you for being angry, especially since it was your son's birthday party. I know they probably meant well, but the way they went about it was so thoughtless and insensitive to everyone involved. If your mom wants to make amends, then she should have told you she planned on bringing the kid in advance so that you could have made an informed decision about whether or not you wanted him to be there.
My fiance almost died in a car accident. That's what my mother-in-law told me. He cheated on me with an ex. Now he's recovering, and I feel so guilty for wanting to end it. I feel like a horrible person. We are supposed to get married on August 20th in a small ceremony. I've been with my fiancé for six years, engaged for one, and they were the best years of my life. He's brilliant in every way, or so I thought. The accident happened six weeks ago. A drunk driver hit my fiancé's car. I spent the worst night in my life in the hospital waiting for answers from the doctors, and he went through hours and hours of surgery. His parents and brother were also there waiting, and I've always loved his family, and they me. His mom is, was, one of my favorite people, and we got along very well. She was happy to have me as her first daughter-in-law. She's religious, and when my fiancé was hovering between life and death, she was worried about his sins, so she told me he cheated on me about two months ago with an ex he bumped into. She explained that it was because of the wedding and the stress of planning it. Apparently, I've been both stressed out and stressing him out. He had a weak moment. It was a one-time thing, and he regretted it so much. He asked his parents for advice on what to do, and they told him not to say anything. As long as he's remorseful, and as long as it was me he wanted, he should forget about what he did and move on. His whole family knew. After the hospital, he moved back to his parents' house because we live in a flat without lifts. I visit him every day. I haven't told him that I know, and his family is acting like nothing has changed. They're very happy he's doing better, and understandably so, and my presence by his side is very helpful according to him and his family. Now... Both fiancé and his parents are talking about us being able to get married on the day we set after all. I feel awful because I don't want that. Our relationship was over the moment I found out about the cheating. I stayed because I loved him, still do, and I wanted him to feel better. I couldn't break his heart while he's recovering. I also thought that the wedding was postponed and that I, or we, would have had time for him to recover fully and be strong and independent again so I could leave with a clear conscience. I tried to speak to his mom today, but she just started hyperventilating and kept telling me not to do this. She made a mistake by telling me and that I shouldn't take advantage of what she said in desperation to punish him and kill his spirit. He's still recovering and he needs me. I have been thinking since my talk with his mom about everything and I'm so angry at him. I'm ashamed that even when I was worried about his life, I was very angry and resentful. We were supposed to have our wedding in this beautiful manor house that he found that's all-inclusive with our most important people. My best friend is a DJ and my parents paid for the whole thing even though they're much poorer so I don't know where the stress has come from. We fixed everything in a week. I'm so angry and I've kept bottling it up since the incident. I'm afraid I'm going to explode soon. The original poster created another post later and wrote this. I told my fiance that I know about his infidelity and canceled the wedding. He still wants a second chance. I've written here three days ago before I talked to my fiance. This is after I told him I know about his cheating. I started by telling my parents who are paying for the wedding about what happened and that I'm canceling the wedding. Hopefully they can get back some of what they paid via their home insurance. I've told them that I'm going to pay the rest of the damages. My dad refused. I insisted it's not up to them. Since my fiance still lives with his parents, I felt that I would be outnumbered if I went alone to end it. Text or call wasn't an option since he meant a lot more to me than that and I really wanted to see his face and ask what the fuck. I also wanted him to see my hurt. I don't want it to be comfortable for him. Cheaters must see the hurt they cause and hopefully learn from it. I took my mom with me. When I told him that the wedding was off and the reason why, he started crying. He told me all the things they say in desperation. He was foolish. He didn't think. He was stressed out. He was scared. It meant nothing. He regretted it. He didn't want to tell me because it meant nothing and he didn't want to hurt me. I should have given him a chance to prove himself and his loyalty. He can ask his parents to pay for the wedding. We can postpone the wedding indefinitely. I can take the apartment and he will live with his parents as long as it takes for me to forgive him. I haven't cried as much as I did when I was listening to his bullshit and afterwards on my way home. How could he do this to me? He didn't give me a satisfying answer to why he did this to me. To us. I've cried myself to sleep every night since the accident, and yet I cried like I just found out. I'm going to stay in the apartment that we bought together, and he will stay with his parents. Prices have gone down these last couple of months, and we both agreed that we don't want to sell for less than what we paid. But the moment it goes up again, we're selling. I've started packing his things now, and tomorrow I'm renting a van to move his things to his parents' house. Sorting out his stuff and packing his clothes made it real for me. I didn't expect it to be so emotional. Why do I still love him so much? He has been texting me, and he has called me twice, and we mostly talk about mundane stuff, but also about us, in our relationship. His mom has called me to say that she felt guilty for first not advising him to come clean, but even for later divulging a secret to me without his permission. She was disappointed that I took advantage of her moment of panic, but that she understands that I'm hurt. She said he will do his best to win me back. I'm a bit irritated about the fact that none of them, including my parents, believe that it's really over, and I don't have the energy to prove my point either. I just need some alone time now, and some peace and quiet. I'm sorry that you had to go through all of this. I know how much you loved him and how difficult it must be for you right now. I think he did the right thing by confronting him, because if he really cared about you, he would have never kept such a big secret from you. Maybe he was afraid of losing your love, but I can assure you that if someone truly loves someone else, they would never want to hurt them like this. You don't deserve to be treated like this, and I hope that your next relationship will be better than this one.
If you enjoyed these stories, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Check out the other videos on your screen right now. Otherwise, you're definitely the jerk.